Okay, we're good. Okay, so this is a demo of um, an Open Geospatial Consortium team engine um, <clears throat> validation suite that's been customized for uh, DIGS markup language. Um, this will be on the um, accessible from the uh, Geo Institute website. Um, so anyone can log in um, and create and do tests. The first time you log in, it will ask you to um, register yourself as a, with a username and a password. Um, I'm not going to show you that. Once you, anyone can do that. It's public once you've done that. Um, these are the two different sorts of things that are available here. The first is um, and these are previous test sessions that this user has done. And so we're going to step through creating a new test session. And there's a menu here. And so all of these are from uh, American Society of Civil Engineers. There's two different things you can do here. One is to validate DIGS schemas and files. Um, there's only one version of that available. There's only one revision of that available. Um, Optionally, you can um, you can name, provide a description, start a test session. It opens up a little console, which gives you an abbreviated version of what's going on. Um, then there'd be an input parameters page, um, and so you can enter the location of a DIGS GML document file. And this is test instance 20B to dem demonstrate some errors in the file. Or you could upload a DIG document from your own um, from your own machine, own local machine, and then there is a place to put in a Schematron business rules file. Um, and again, you can use this uh, one for DIG's business rules 2OB, which will um, check to see that appropriate um, test properties are, are in the DIG's file for each test. And it will also check to see that correct coordinate reference system references are, are done. And it will look at the DIGS GML coordinate reference systems dictionary to do that. Um, and for the, for the test properties, it will look at a, a specialized output version of the, um, in XML, of um, test properties uh, dictionary spreadsheet. So we're just going to use the samples here instead of browsing and uploading anything. Um, and, and just say start. And so then you get um, an executing test set of gears that are the equivalent of the old please wait working message um, and wait for a minute. And then once it's done its testing, you'll see a results file. Um, and we expected this to fail because it's the demo errors. And so if you click on um, view details, you will see the text, a text error log. And so this is a summary at the beginning that says um, one thing about the schema failed and one thing about the GML document itself failed. And then it says you can see a detailed uh, test report. And all of the uh, user tests are, are saved on the server. Each user has only has access to their own test information. Um, and so the first thing says we import full GML schema. There's an unexpected number of imported GML elements. The full GML schema has to be imported according to the GML uh, standard. Um, that's OK, because DIGS profiles the GML schemas, um, which is legal in GML, um, and does that so that they're much smaller. Only the, the definitions from the basic GML schemas that are needed are used and referenced and, and so on. Um, so that's expected. This allows us to um, to evolve the DIG schemas and to minimize the processing required to validate them. And then, so the second message here is saying, "Oh, we had some Schematron business rules errors," and um, this isn't necessarily real friendly. But if you work your way down to the test. Um, this DIGS Atterberg's limit test with an ID of Alt1 um, property class. The third instance of that um, had a property class called no such property. Um, and that was not defined in the Schematron support test properties uh, dictionary. 
Um, so that was, you know, illegal as, a, as something to use in, in a, as a business rule, that that was illegal to use in the document. And then the next test is saying that um, this modeling procedure with this ID is um, not supported, not defined in the, in the test properties. Um, so, you know, it's an illegal test as opposed to a property. And then finally, the last one here is that this SRS name attribute value um, with the DIGS prefix, um, standard prefix, but then none such instead of an actual um, coordinate reference system's name um, for a particular point location um, has to be defined in the dictionary. So, you know, this is just a way of testing against business rules that are defined in external files. Um, testing an instance document that it conforms to the business rules. Um, so there are also um, very fancy graphic summaries that are standard with uh, the team engine. So it will give you an o a test suite's overview and show you what failed passed or what was skipped. Things are skipped um, for items that are not applicable to the instance document. You know, so for example, um, GML applicate was application scheme is defining spatial topologies. Well, DIGS doesn't define any topologies, um, although that's something that you can do in GML. So all those tests were skipped. Um, and so if we, you can drill down from this page to see the details. And so here we see that the thing that failed was import full GML schema, which we saw from the previous um, error log. Or we can see on the GML documents, um, Assertion area that three there were three schema validation errors from schema trial. So um, that's the that's the basic validator. Um, we'll go back to the sessions list, and now you see there's another session. There's a separate you know log file for this user there. Um, so now we'll create another session, and this one isn't really a test. This is really a utility. But given all of the support I already had. In, in this test platform, this was the easiest way to build this for you all. Um, so this is an XSLT utility. Um, so we'll demo XSLT. And again, the first thing that will come up, uh, it will start to show you the console window, and then we'll say executing tests. We'll have a data entry screen. You can enter or upload an, a DIGS XML instance document. You can use this um, style sheet or upload your own to do the transformation. And then you can um, click Start. And the Team Engine will, uh, will compile that Schematron, well, I'm sorry, that XSLT style sheet and apply it to the um, input document. And the view de details will just tell you that it passed. And so unlike the previous screen, now you see we have a download XSLT output file option. And so if we do that, um, you can save it. You can save the resulting XML file um, or other kind of file to, um, your, uh, to your local computer, or you can open it. And so um, here I'll open it. And the input file, if we go back to the um, to the web here was um, was this um, uh, demo errors file, and the test the way DIG formats data, um, there are a separate description of all of the properties in this file. In this case, for this test, was tip resistance, sleeve friction, friction ratio, pore water pressure, and then all of the actual data is in a big block. And and some people have a difficult time dealing with this, so. What um, uh, what that style sheet did, as an example, um, is um, oh sorry I didn't have it here. So what I want to search for here is um, is this test result. And so if I search um, if I search the file we just downloaded. Um, for that test result, um, then you'll see that um, instead of having the properties described in one place and all the data somewhere else, 
we now have a, a much easier to understand test result that has a result set that are data records, and each record um, has the property and the data there together. And so this is the location, and if this were there's a further another sample further down for a monitor, um, it would have timestamps for each of the things as well. So that's a demo of um, of the Team Engine Validator and XSLT utility. Um, there is also um, a um, I've written a style sheet um, that has to be run separately because it uses um, a product, uh, open source product called XPath, EXPath, um, to um, somewhere here to make H. TTP calls to a service, in this case it's calling back to GeoServer, in order to do coordinate reference system uh, transformations. And so this is a sample of an HTTP GET request to GeoServer to reproject a point, and this is the resulting point. And so this style sheet that I wrote uses that same capability of GeoServer to convert coordinates in um, this thing will read all of the digs files in a directory and produce a um, then make calls to GeoServer to convert coordinates, which is what it's doing now, um, slowly. Um, and then it produces an output file, um, in this case called samplingfeatures.properties. And that's just a comma separated values file. Um, and so the first the first line in it is um, is the name of the fields, and then the other lines in it are data. And that GeoServer can use this as a geographic data store. And after you've done this, you copy the file over to GeoServer, and then in GeoServer, um, not that one, not that one, this one. Um, you can go in and edit the layers as an ad, as an administrator, um, and so this is the sampling feature layer. Oops. So, um, session is timed out. Um, can edit the layers. And the thing you have to do if if you make a change to this is then um, scroll down in here and update the bounding boxes. Um, they won't change here because this hasn't, um, is just update the bounding boxes for all the data in that file um, and save it. And then either as administrator or not, GeoServer provides a way to preview the layers for the data that it has. And so for um, sampling features for this little sample file we have, um, we'll first look at it um, as uh, KML and open it in Google Earth. And um, this will let you select um, the features just by clicking on place marks for them. Um, and there isn't any other way you can select here. Um, and um, sorry, this is slow, I guess, because we're also sharing the session. We're fighting for bandwidth. Um, so here you, here you can see place marks for four different sampling features. And if you click on one of these, then the actual the data from that little index file, samplingfeatures.properties, is displayed here as a as an HTML file, HTML table, um, and the um, file that it came from is here. Now clicking on that in Google Earth doesn't help you because it just shows you all the text data with no tags. Um, but you can copy the link and then go and open up another web browser window. And it's designed um, to set this up so that your web server can serve the document. So then here's the actual digs file that was associated with that index. And you can, if you want to download it and save it, you can. You can save the page to your local computer. So this gives you gives the DOT a way to um, Publish their um, their geotechnical geo environmental information via digs, 
um, and it's basically free. Um, all this is open source, and, uh, and you know the, the, little, the little utility I wrote is you know something that any um, infotech person can run. Um, where where is that tool? Right now, it's, this is just on my laptop, but you know I'm going to give it to you, um, and I'm going to set up a. Um, um, an application, web application archive file for GeoServer the way this is configured. So someone who, you know, a DOT has to install Apache Tomcat. They can install their local team engine. They can install this GeoServer customization. They can un they have to ex they have to also install the XPath software that I mentioned that does the coordinate transformation request. But though, having done those installs, then they have everything they need. To have this same setup that I have here on um, on uh, my laptop. Now the other way the other way you can um, can view this um, is with Open Layers, which is another open source project. It's an OGC web map service client, um, and um, unfortunately, this you don't get any background information, any background map layers on. Um, and I'm sorry this is um, being slow. But this will show you the same points again. And um, if you click on them, it um, produces the same sorts of HTML tables um, with, the, um, with all of the data about the sampling feature and the tests that were run for it. The advantage of this interface is that um, <coughs> You can query against all of the data, and this could be, I think, you know, say a thousand points. Um, and so I've got a couple of in my notes here. Um, so you can query geographically by a bounding box. So if we put in a bounding box information like this and apply it, um, you see the the borehole information disappeared here because it's outside the bounding box, and we can reset it. Or another way, um, you can query against the um, information that's in that little sampling features properties index file. Um, not against everything that's in the, the basic digs file, but you basically got the project and the, um, the sampling feature names and the tests and the properties to query against. But so if you want to just see projects that have something like a name, something like dam, um, you can do that, and then we're only left with the with a, this project, um, let's try and click on it again. I'll be down here, and you can see that the reason we're finding that one um, is because the name is Test Project Dewey Dam, so that's why that matched like a dam. Um, and so, you know, those are ways to um, to um, serve. Digs data on the web once it's been created using tools like um, the one Roger demoed. Um, this uh, uh, properties file approach uh, does not scale well to large volumes of data. Um, my recommendation to handle that um, until it becomes too painful, so painful that you're willing to pay for a real tool, um, a real commercial tool, is to just segment the data. 